Now the Panthers have just squandered their chance to put points on the board at the end of the second, at the end of the first half. And their whole point in deferring the kickoff was so that they could get two possessions in a row. But since they squandered their last possession of the second half, actually four of the first half, now that now they're getting the ball at the opening of the second half. Let's see what happens. Now, is that what you saw in the first half of this game? Or did you see a whole bunch of Carolina's stupid mistakes? They're, they're, they're making it sound like, like Denver's defense has just dominated Carolina. Instead of talking about how, how many mistakes Carolina has made. See, that's the question. Is the defense causing Carolina not to be able to score anything? Or is Carolina making so many mistakes that they never make during the season or this year's playoffs? Is that the cause of their lack of points? And clearly, even if you don't believe this Super Bowl was rigged, it's Carolina's mistakes that are causing them to be behind in this game. So why don't the announcers talk about that? that I mean, that's a question to ask. Let's see. I wonder what this play will be. A one-yard run up the middle. Let's see. So there's the signal to Denver that same old, same old. We made no adjustments whatsoever. We're just going to keep doing what hasn't been working. Now, is that what you would really expect from a team that was 15-1 and in the regular season? They've won two playoff games. They've dominated two good teams. So they're 17-1 and at this point. They're trailing for the first time in the playoffs in this game. And instead of coming out with a big pass or some kind of Cam Newton run or something to, to shake it up, they do exactly what hasn't been working in the first half. So either these coaches are incompetent or they're not trying to win. Now, now, look at these stats. <clears throat> For as poor as Carolina has played, <clears throat> Denver has managed to play even worse. But see, there's them two turnovers. Two fumbles. Two ridiculous fumbles by Carolina. Not to mention one fumble when Cam Newton tried to give the ball away, but he was down. And and look, just remember, Carolina's passing yards is so low because Cam Newton 
overthrew wide open receivers. Two wide open receivers. One that would probably would have scored like a man. I don't, what was that? It probably would have been a sixty yard touchdown, and another one would have been probably a twenty five yard gain for a first down. So add add those add another hundred yards to what Carolina's passing yards should be. If Car if Cam Newton hadn't accidentally quote unquote overthrew them when they're wide open. And they don't even talk about how bad he's playing. And that's that's the story of this game. That the NFL MVP is playing like like a third string quarterback that should be cut. Now I want you to watch this play. I'm going to show it at full speed. Watch this play and, and tell me or just think to yourself what's wrong with this play. Okay, now, did Jim Nance just sound surprised that he ran out of bounds? Because I was surprised that he ran out of bounds. He caught it in full, in, in full stride, the fastest man on the field. No one was even near him. No one, literally nobody touched him on this play. <clears throat> Does he turn it upfield to try to get more yardage? No. Does he turn it up field to try to score a touchdown that would have broke this game wide open? No. He runs out of bounds. This is the other guy right here, Ted Ginn Jr. This is the other guy I know for a fact was in on, the, in on throwing this game. First of all, this this whole game, this whole game, this uh, supposedly great cornerback, whatever his name is, Talik, he's been he's been playing off of the Carolina receivers by ten yards the whole game. In other words, the Carolina receivers are wide open whenever they're covered by Talik. And watch this play: fastest man on the field, one on one coverage. Look, right, wide open. See, this is the Carolina Panthers we watched all season long. Look. Look, he caught it. Now look it. We saw number 97, a big 300-pound lineman, run all the way down that field and catch and save that punt return from a touchdown. This is Ted Ginn Jr., fastest man on this football field, one of the fastest men in the NFL, probably the fastest. He catches the ball in stride right in that position. Why doesn't he turn it up field and go score a touchdown? Instead, he's going to run from where he is right here. He's going to run in this direction towards this defender and this guy here all he's got to do he's, he's about five yards six yards away from him if he just turns up the field and goes this way or even slightly more like this this guy has no chance of catching him this guy's way behind him and this guy would have to he, he wouldn't have the right angle on him to get him here but instead, Ginn Jr. goes from here and he runs straight out of bounds. And even when he runs towards the sidelines, he's not even forced out of bounds. He's, he's only, he, he goes out of bounds on his own, untouched. This, this is, they're down by six points in the Super Bowl. 
This is this is their big play to go up, be up fourteen to thirteen, change the momentum of the game, and he runs out of bounds. There's there's no excuse for this. <clears throat> See, look, even right there, he's still ahead of him. Even if you think he ran the right path, watch this. He's still this guy here is still not close to him. This guy here is on his heels. He should he can still turn it up. This is the fastest man on the football field. Look. See this guy and who forced him to this sideline? I mean you could say that uh, that this guy here forced his path towards the sidelines, but how many times have you seen a, a receiver, running back, or, or just somebody who's really trying to score a touchdown, tightrope the sideline. Watch what he does. I mean, he's all, he's not even in the 30-yard line. They're, they're, they're barely within field goal range on this play. Watch this. Look. He, I mean, it, it, even after he took this ridiculous run, why, he ran it straight out of bounds. He should have turned it upfield right here. Try to get more yardage. There's no reason he shouldn't have, he shouldn't have scored a touchdown on this play. Okay, now Carolina got a big play, second play of the, of the second half. Right? I mean, most teams would be like, "Yeah, let's go." You know, this is our chance. Even though Ginn should have scored there. Let, let's see how let's see how Cam uh, avoids taking a go ahead touchdown. Now remember, in this game already, we've seen Cam go like this from a position here to go back here and around. Back here and around. And look at the center of the field. See, this is one of them 12 times Stephen A. Smith was talking about on first take where Cam could have ran but didn't. Instead, I mean, yes, Denver's getting pressure on the outside. But that don't mean they should get to him. They're only getting to him because this guy's not trying to avoid getting sacked. I mean, he has a perfect running lane. We've seen him do it in this game. He did it all season long. This is what would happen. I mean, Denver's got six guys coming at him. I mean, basically, they got, uh, it looks like two linebackers blitzing. That means they got one on one coverage all over the field, because they got five they got five receivers out in the pattern, and Denver has uh, five more players back there to cover them. And it looks like they're going deep because nobody's in this picture. All that Cam needs to do is take a step up and go, step up and throw, or step up and go. But watch what he does. I mean. He gets, he's still got a running lane. He's just wait. He's waiting for this. So Cam was unable to find a receiver. Five receivers in the pattern. One-on-one -on -one coverage, and he couldn't find one single guy open, and he was unable to run. 